Hi, I'm Colin, I'm a gallery assistant here at Roselle House and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some items we've chosen for our cabinet of curiosities. So these two are monkey skulls, as you can probably tell looking at them. Uh, they're unidentified though, so we don't have any sort of formal identification of what species they belong to. That might have been noted when they came in, but they came into the collection probably quite some time ago, and unfortunately if there's any documentation it doesn't seem to have survived. Uh, they were in a box labelled primate skulls, um, but we can say quite confident they're, confidently they're monkey skulls. Uh, so there are a few reasons that we can say that. Uh, some of them quite evident just looking at them. You can see the general shape. But there are also some features that monkeys, and I'm including us in this, have that other primates don't that really set them apart. So you'll see the little bar going along the side, and that's very much the sort of bit that you'd be touching here, below your eyes and above the sort of cheek. Um, that's quite pronounced, and there's no bar going from it up to the sort of top of the cranium. Many, many primates do have that, so the lack of that puts them in the family that includes monkeys or simians and tarsers. Now, we can tell they're not tarsers because tarsers have huge buggy eyes, much narrower, more sort of rodent or even chihuahua-like snouts. These don't, so that gives us simians. Um, and the reason that I say monkeys rather than simians is just because it's easier, but also because monkeys are the majority of simians and apes emerge from them. And so I think it's perfectly fair to describe them as monkeys. You might disagree. So there's some things about them that I really like. The top one, the smaller, I really enjoyed uh, just sort of, sort of the sense of closeness to us that I got from it when I first saw this when it was in the bed of tissue paper to protect it. And you couldn't really see the bottom part of the skull so well. It was just that sort of top part from the top of the nose and the eyes. And it looked really human. And I had that moment of like a double take. And I just, and then, okay, it's a monkey skull. And I, I thought that was an interesting thing that I wanted you know, other people to be able to experience. And the other one I think is really interesting for comparison because it has some features that just make it much more instantly, okay, that's a monkey. Those really pronounced canines, you know, if you think of like a smelling monkey or ape, you probably picture them with the big canines showing, and it's got them. It's also a little bit bigger, it's got more of a pronounced snout, reads much less human. Um, but I think having the two of them there and the comparison between the two, you can sort of see what features they have in common that say monkey and what features that, that sort of separate them and you can maybe tell you know there's sort of different types of species not just different species but maybe very different roles so you know big canines but also big incisors may be he's eating more meat the other one teeth much more proportioned like our own maybe more of a omnivore like us uh, and so i thought that was sort of fascinating and partly because of what we don't know as much as what we, you know, we do uh, so I thought, you know, that would be something that people can take a look at and they can think about and see what they can come up with themselves. Um, and, you know, obviously, if you're in here and you have a chance to get a look at them, see if you can spot anything that I've not noted that really sets them apart from each other or, or connects them together. It sets them apart from us as well, because I think that's rather interesting. Thank you.